this bed here we're thinking um sweet corn sweet corn definitely for next sweet year corn. sweet corn and popcorn or just sweet corn sweet corn and popcorn because we've got plenty of room there we can really i think if we aim to fill this bed with sweet corn and sweet corn can be literally like quite close to each other because yeah those are very close are, to each other the closer they are the better they are they really support each other yeah and there's been a few that hadn't survived when we planted them and the the closeness has really filled those out so i'm thinking save this purpley plant yep. and pick one of those plants to save sweet corn off because i don't think they were hybrids and we just plant this whole bed up with sweet corn because we love sweet corn and we can freeze it as well and prepare and and preserve it somehow <coughs> so that would be good does that work with sweet corn to a limit i suppose it might do yeah well, we could try it but this whole bed because we haven't used this whole bed mm. this year so far and there's other bits of beds where we just left the onions in and they really didn't need to be left so this whole bed that was potatoes, sweet corn. This bed here, potatoes. Yep. Just whole thing, potatoes, and get the seeds. And as soon as we get the seeds, we just bung them in. Yep. Well, not as soon as we get them, but as soon as March. we can, March bung them in. in this bed, I don't know if we said about this bed. That was beans, wasn't it? Well, I'm thinking the beans, we could do a whole strip of beans. Yep. But I'm thinking, actually, you know where we've got the brassicas there with yep. the netting on it? that whole bed beans because it's yeah. a slightly shorter bed yeah. and what we can do is we can just put a permanent structure up like we talked about that structure over there we can put that just up there and it just stays up the whole time because okay. we can plant in amongst it in the winter if need be and that's is that going to stay as our pumpkin patch then that square i think that square works perfectly well for a pumpkin patch because thing is if we put anything else in there that needs weeding or any special treatment mm. we're treading we're not treading on pathway i think that works perfectly well as our pumpkin slash squash 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 patch and and i like the um sunflowers there as well yeah i think that looks good and it's amazingly weed free under mm. the pumpkin leaves yes there's a little bit but nowhere near like this which is why Remember I said that we could have um, sweet corn planted there with squash in amongst it because that actually grows quite nicely because the sweet corn is above the squash yeah. and it's a way of using up space. So if we did, and I don't think we will anytime soon, but if we did find that we're looking at like the, the potato patch or the um, sweet corn patch with envious eyes, then the following year we can just plant the sweet corn in amongst the squashes. Yeah. Because I think year by year we're refining what we want to grow. Yeah. Um, the where is, is already set in stone because we've yeah. got the beds. But it's it's like we know we like potatoes and we know we like sweet corn. Um, the sunflowers are just a... <laughs> <laughs> I just think you look cute with your fluffy beard and your glove and your iron brew and your knees out. Sun out, knees out. Let <laughs> me groom myself. Mm. Mm, fluffiness. <laughs> anyway, go on. But yeah, so the potatoes, the sweet corn, um, runner beans, definitely. Tomatoes, we can grow. Green them beans, in there. absolutely. Yeah. Um, year on year, whether we keep on going with the Brussels sprouts, we'll see. But I think we can do. A small number, maybe eight to ten plants. Well, I think the number of plants we've got there will yeah. more than meet our needs. Yeah. And I like Brussels sprouts. Yeah, I know I we didn't particularly use them last year, but I do like Brussels sprouts. We were quite lazy, really. We were. But definitely Brussels sprouts again. There are a lot of stuff that we've planted, pretty much everything we've planted this year. It's nice that we've got the asparagus bed, which is just going to stay there, because I yeah. think that is incredible. There's one plant in particular that's got about four... Um, oh, it's going gangbusters. It really it's is. Really, it, it's really... Like it's thick as a bamboo cane. The mm. rest of them are still a little bit feathery and, and, and sort of juvenile, but there's one or two that are really... So next year is going to be monstrous. And I'm definitely going to plant the... Um, Wallflowers. Not wallflowers, um, yeah, wallflowers. Not wallflowers. 
cornflowers amongst those because they just look so pretty. Mm. They really complement the ferns very nicely. So I'll definitely do that again. Kale, I need to do that again. And really, I can plant kale now for winter kale. Um, we, the, now, this, I'm not saying don't do it, but it's just a question, are we making the most of it? Because I know you like brassicas, but are we making the most of the brassicas? Because we seem to sort of, we've done it now this year, last year, and I don't know whether it's a case of being a bit lazy in harvesting, but we're not. What do you it. mean when you're talking about brassicas? The, the little things along here. These that were covered yeah. in weeds, that is meant to be kale. Oh, that's right. done absolutely awfully. Right. I'm not going to bother with that rubbish again. I'm That's purple kale. And I know it's been a hot year, but it's been absolutely freaking awful this year. It hasn't grown barely at all. They look as if, they look practically the same as when I first put them in, and that was several months ago, so I'm fed up with that. I'm just going to do the green kale. The fancy okay. stuff... Some of it just doesn't grow properly and it pisses me off, so I'm not bothering with that. And the tomatoes, I'm not going to bother putting in the fruit page again. They really only went there because that was a, an empty space. Yeah. I'm going to. They've not done too badly. Either. No, they've not done too badly at all. I'm going to grow the peas in the fruit cage yep. because it's going to be pro um, protected from birds. We need to sort the fruit cage out because it's in a bit of a. It's even finished yet really no but to be fair that's going to be probably an august job um yep wind, late sort of early winter late august early winter or possibly early next year yeah because it needs to be done before really we start planting stuff in there that the birds are going to like yeah i already put some peas in there but again i didn't really water them properly and they've kind of suffered for that but yes, yeah, so, in summary, <laughs> sweet corn, popcorn and sweet corn, potatoes, to be arranged, to be arranged, beans, asparagus, which is already in there, um, that's our pumpkin patch and squash patch, fruit cage is fruit and peas, and so we've got really this bed here and that bed there that's sort of more flexible flexible yeah flexible like flexible um so we've got these two beds that are currently unallocated so that will be kale carrots brussels sprouts uh lettuce um spring onions and what else Anything else that we want to plant? Yeah, I guess it's, it's take a walk around the seed. Garlic. Oh, garlic, yes. Garlic, of garlic, course, garlic. 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 In fact, garlic. we can start putting the garlic in relatively soon. Give it a week or two to dry, I think, so it's had a break. Yeah. I don't know. Not? I'll have to look up how to store it. But that garlic that's in your house has had a week or two to dry. Oh, that definitely. That, that needs to go in sorry, pots. Sorry, I was thinking more about the, the elephant garlic. Yeah. Well, the elephant garlic could probably stay in the ground. And I'm, I'm just absolutely gobsmacked how well that's done this year. That's done absolutely brilliantly. That's done. I mean, that is... That's not even the biggest one, but that's done really nicely. And then we've got the um, onions. A load of normal garlic, which actually can be stored now because it should be dry. Potatoes have been a bit poop. The least said about the the, uh, the weeds, the better. Um, but you can see that the kale, this stuff has just, it's barely grown. It's been an absolute complete waste of time. We've got carrots here that I've never had any luck with carrots, so he's done all the planting for those. They're a bit patchy, but you know, it's better than nothing. And these have been really nice for a bit of shade. <laughs> you can tell my lettuce has bolted a little bit. So that's probably going to need to be pulled up and given to the chickens. But the rest of it under there is doing pretty well, to be fair. It needs a bit of TLC. It does need a bit of TLC. And then we've got some sweet corn. I can't remember which of these is the popcorn. So I'd have to check my previous videos. But sweet corn here. 
this was elephant garlic um, and and some onions as well there were some onions in amongst that lot they've been brought up and more sweet corn which has done quite nicely and I quite like this in that it's it's growing up from the base as a single stalk and then it's sort of branching out and they've both of them done that this year and I've not seen that before so that's kind of cool and we're going to keep this one because it's such a beautiful purple colour so this is what we're going to let grow for seed and these are the ones we're going to eat because so you can really see the difference in the colour there and then some beans which are flowering nicely they're doing quite nicely so long as the slugs don't get them early on the beans actually seem to be doing quite nicely got some lovely red bits as well and peas have just been nibbled to death by the birds and there's some more in there along this edge but they haven't really done very well tomatoes fruit this stuff which is everywhere which i've just let grow this um i think it's chard or something some kind of leafy thing but it's, if anyone knows what that is please let me know because i actually am not too sure psst, psst, psst. hey there's some of our what are they called winter, winter squashes winter squash or, or is it called squash. mashed potato it, the variety it, it, i'm not sure but it's I'm pretty sure that's winter... called mashed potato how many plants have we got in there four four plants so four that's a bit of a fat hen there you go. <laughs> um, massive, massive sunflower. Look at that. How beautiful is that? Oh, love sunflowers. That's probably our biggest one. So we'll be keeping this one for seed for next year. We might want to tie that to the the upright for the, upright for the fruit cage. But that's definitely being kept for seed. They're very good for obviously for um, pollinators. We've got our little raspberry patch in the corner there. That's doing okay. We've got some red and yellow raspberries there with a little bumblebee. Um, pear, blackberry, blackberry. That one there is plum, I want to say, that tree. And then in the corner there, we've got some um, damson. And then this, of course, is a cherry. Show me your lovely big yellow thing. Ooh, oh. I would never ask. <laughs> How beautiful is that colour? It's a gorgeous colour, that is. What's it called? Atlantic Giant. Atlantic Giant. And then that is from the seeds that we had last year. Yeah. Which we might not bother with again next year because he's so in love with his big yellow bulbous thing. Um, these are sprouts, brag, not to brag, but these are the sprouts that need desperately need water by the looks of them. Um, purple bits are the sprouts, and then these are some cauliflower that I threw in to fill in space. Uh, sprouts again, and cauliflower. They're a bit behind, but then everything else is. This is where we've just taken up the onions, and by we, I mean him. Um, more of this stuff that's just everywhere that I'm just letting go, because I actually quite like it. Um, another one there. Asparagus is doing beautifully and look, look at these, they're so pretty. And then we've got some some red and some of the, the classic blue, cornflower blue. Um, more and some slightly pinky colours and oh this is this is absolutely beautiful. Asparagus bed with the the flowers in there. Because you don't want to plant anything that's going to disturb the shallow asparagus roots. So why not do something pretty? Look at the pretty. And it's very good for bees and such like as well. This is definitely my favourite one and I don't usually like pink. Um, it's another pretty one. Uh, but yeah, the asparagus is doing really nicely. Considering that I only had like one stalk on them last year and now it's just coming up all over the place. So I reckon we'll probably get a good... Hello bee. probably get a good harvest from it next year which would be nice there we 
There we go. Anyway, so yeah, clearly that's quite good for the bees. We've got a bumblebee. Um, and then some more. We need to sort out which of those we're going to leave to grow on and which ones we're going to chop off. But that's kind of come out a little bit sort of marrow shaped, which is interesting. You like what, sorry? The red ones. Yeah. They're very nice, aren't they? But it just, it does very nicely in amongst the asparagus because they start growing up mm. after the asparagus has already yeah. come up. So it doesn't interfere with the asparagus much. Look at this one, it's still sending out shoots. Oh gosh, there's another one down there. Yeah, it's going and absolutely brilliantly. Well well. Yeah, we've got berries on it as well. It's quite yeah, nice. I some of those lying on the floor. I don't know whether you want to bring them out there. I'm just leaving them to see what happens, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but that's it. I mean, we've honestly not done very well this year, really. We've neglected a fair amount, haven't we? Mm. Um, but, you know, it's only our second year. And we're getting into the swing of things a little bit now. And really sort of settling on what we like to grow. Yeah, absolutely. It's a marathon, not a sprint. <laughs> I was thinking that sunflower, that big one, it's it might gorgeous. be an idea just to give it a bit more support because that head's going to get heavy when the seeds come through. But we can tie it to the upright of the fruit cage. Um, yeah, or stick a cane in. I don't think we've got a cane that's going to be big enough for it. Could do a cane. There's some big ones. We'll try. We'll yeah. Right. And of course, because we've been letting the weeds go so much, we've got a nice full compost heap. So, you know, that's something, I suppose. <laughs> Looking for the silver lining. Oh, it's there. It's, it's there. there. It's definitely there. It's definitely there. Oh. I'm tired now. I've done a full day's work. Don't blame me. <laughs>